Hello, welcome back to The Winning Edge. And what's next? We are always having conversations to develop the next generation of women and minorities in sports and entertainment. And on Wednesdays, we want to bring individuals and industry professionals to you to share more about opportunities and career um in, the, in career opportunities in sports entertainment. So today we had Dan Rosenthal from Elevate Sports and we had a phenomenal conversation with him earlier today. And today we're gonna have another wonderful conversation with Jared. And I, I, I can't wait for him to join the conversation and get him in. But like all of our conversations are meant to showcase industry professionals who are working in the in sports and entertainment and talking more about their journey. Hi, Jared. How are you? What's up? How you doing? I'm fabulous. I can't wait for this conversation. I'm so excited. I saw you were in earlier when we were talking to Dan. Yeah. And so you know how this goes. Yeah, so for sure. So we're going to jump right into it. And I always mm -hmm. start every conversation with who are you, what do you do, and why? Well, um, once again, I want to thank you uh, for having me. Uh, my name is Jared Humer. Uh, I'm a corporate partnerships manager here with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, you said who who I am, what I do, and why am I here? Yes. Well, well like, what do you like? What beyond your title of corporate mm -hmm. partnerships at the Cavs? Mm -hmm. wh who are you, and then why are you that person? Why are you? Sure. What do you do? For sure. So who I am, Hi, Morgan. Uh, How are you? Humor, uh, entrepreneur, you spirited, young professional. Um, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm good. Yes, I can. For sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I had some Wi-Fi issues. Uh, but I'm Jared Humor, uh, entrepreneurial, spirited, young, young professional. Um, I'm young. Uh, I'm a hustler. I'm driven, uh, motivated. Uh, why I'm here, uh, I'm here to open doors for the next generation. Um, that's all I'm about. I'm, I'm all about bridging the gap and uh, just being valuable. Awesome. Well, I, like I said, we had a conversation earlier with Dan, and we, I have really been on a push lately to have conversations with individuals who are working in revenue-generating roles. Mm -hmm. It's something that I feel really passionate about getting mm -hmm. the next generation thinking about industries in sales, development, mm -hmm. anything that is affecting the bottom line. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about what is corporate partnership. Mm -hmm. If I was, most people think about, I want to be a coach, mm -hmm. I want to be the GM, or there's ticket sales and marketing, social media. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. exactly, for that person, for your grandma that knows nothing about sports, <laughs> if you're trying to tell her, hey, grandma, I'm working, I, I do corporate partnerships at the cabs, what is that, mm -hmm. what does that role look like and what is it about? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, corporate partnerships, it's it's kind of like all of the above, you know, to, to a certain extent. Uh, you have the opportunity to connect with all members of the organization. Uh, whether it be basketball operations, uh, social media, uh, digital uh, marketing, community relations. Essentially what you're doing is you're managing external relationships on behalf of the organization. So you're looking to create a mutually beneficial relationship uh, when it comes to driving revenue. Um, that's important, but it's not the most important thing. What's most important is essentially um, just finding means of connecting the dots and uh, finding a median and finding what values and alignments you have uh, along with the other organization. So how how does how does Jared end up at the Cavs? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about your journey. And, um, you know, something that we talked about with Dan and something I talk about with a lot mm -hmm. of people in the industry is, mm -hmm. you know, we don't think about sales. We don't think sales is an option for us. Mm -hmm. to so we know that in any organization, there are maybe one or two spots when it comes to marketing or social media, but there may be 20 to 25 spots in a sales role mm -hmm. or a corporate partnerships role. So how does Jared end up working uh, corporate partnerships at the Cavs? Yeah, well, I'll say um, it's about six to eight of these positions uh, available um, on the sales and development side throughout um, each professional organization to some extent. I know for sure the NBA, NFL, and MLB. Uh, for, but for myself, uh, I, it depends on how much time we got. <laughs> Not that much. We ain't, we ain't got that much time. <laughs> Just playing. 
but I could dive right in. Uh, so for myself, uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I moved to uh, Tallahassee when I was 17, uh, finished high school, uh, played basketball pretty competitively in high school. But, you know, going into my junior year, you know whether you're going to, you know, go on a full ride, you know, look to, you know, play overseas if you're going to play professionally. I just didn't have those skills, you know, um, admittedly. So um, I, I always was interested in the business side of sports. Uh, I remember um, being like a sophomore growing up in Brooklyn, uh, my high school, Boys and Girls High School. Uh, they got they got a partnership done, a sponsorship done with Under Armour. And it was really intriguing to me because, you know, um, Under Armour was going through their initial like grass grassroots uh, method, just looking for means of, you know, just getting involved in the community. I was just like, hmm, right. that's interesting to me. You know, um, traditionally the school did Nike and everything, but what would make Under Armour get into that? You know, right. uh, so uh, long story short, once I got to, got involved with the program that I moved into and just kind of like fostered into down in Tallahassee, I reached out to Under Armour just kind of like saying, hey, uh, you know, I had this, I, I, I was previously at Boys and Girls, you know, I remember you guys were looking again to the grassroots movement and, you know, it, sound, it seemed like they was giving out, you know, a bunch of material, you know, sweatpants, sneakers, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how could we get this in this program? They actually got back to me. I, I'm, I'm sending like a cold email off yes. of my guy who, you know, on sports marketing manager. They're just like, hey, you know, definitely appreciate you uh, reaching out on behalf of your school. You know, they could tell that I was kind of like an amateur, you know, yeah. but kind of like broke it, broke it down to me. They were just like, hey, you know, uh, here's how it goes. You know, you don't have a top 25 player in the nation. So, unfortunately, we won't sponsor you. But right. it's a discount for next season. And uh, ever since then, I've just been so intrigued about sports marketing and, and partnerships. Uh, I kind of got, I'll say, you know, I'm going to college. I went to, I went to FAMU, of course, um, the number one HBCU in the world. Uh, shout out to my Rattlers that's tuned in. Um, I, I don't want to say I got kind of got lost, but I didn't see a path into the sports industry. I knew I always wanted to get into it. You know, um, I was in student government. Uh, I pledged uh, I pledged an undergrad of uh, my – I facilitated uh, many events on behalf of student government. Was doing a lot. I actually started my own company, all called Dream Team. Shout out to Sam. Shout out to Rattlers. Uh, started started Dream Team uh, there. Uh, just being, like I said, entrepreneurially spirited and looking for finding means to drive revenue. I actually funded myself throughout college, throughout my sophomore, through my senior year. You know, um, just running that company. Shout out to my business partner, Chris Street. Um, so you're like modern day Diddy or or Puff? Or <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say that, man. Uh, Diddy <laughs> definitely inspired me, you know, throughout my my entire life. But um, I, I didn't. I didn't do all that. You know, I'm still on a <laughs> on a smaller scale right now. But yeah. um, like I said, uh, I got I got involved with that, and you know, it's going through the, the the few years. It was kind of like you know, we we were looking to bring it to a, another level. You know, we had you know monthly events, weekly events. You know, just finding means to engage students. You know, um, it was for students, by students. That was kind of like the campaign that, you know, we ran at the time. Uh, it was a lot of guys, you know, 40, 40, 30 years old, trying to, like, make make money off the students. And I didn't like that. You know, my right. sophomore party didn't like that. You know, so throughout my time, uh, things just evolved with the events. And we looked, we looked to find means to bring partners in, you know, um, sponsors in. So um, with us having, like, the upperclassmen, the juniors and seniors, and the graduate students at the time, the local community, because I went to high school, right down the street, you know, right. um, we, we got like the, the local Bacardi reps, you know, the local uh, crown reps, you know, um, sent out some proposals to them, you know, they gave out, you know, product at our events, you know, um, so I got, that's how I kind of like got back into what I was initially interested in and just creating those, you know, just initial partnerships, you know, yeah. um, through, through that, uh, I actually got some job offers uh, along the way uh, with Brown Foreman, with uh, Jack Daniels, with Southern Glacier Wine and Spirits. Uh, I thought I wanted to, you know, be uh, a kind of like on-premise rep for, you know, liquor brands, you know, just kind of like go into the different clubs and activate. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh, okay. I just kind of like, I started to look at, you know, the, the potential mentors I was picking up. I was like, I don't really want to be like these guys in a few years, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this is a, a long story. I'm, I'm coming to a close, I promise. Uh, so, no. um, <laughs> I'm coming to a close. But, um. Following that, uh, just graduating and, you know, having that dream team on resume, I didn't say I, I interned at Wells Fargo, I interned at Pepsi, you know, I did a lot throughout undergrad, so uh, turned down those job offers and actually um, just trying to figure out what, what life was going to be, graduated three years ago, 2017, and um, it just, it was like a, it was like a week, a week to 10 days where I was just like, damn, like, I really turned down, like, you know, the bag after school, you know, just, um, right. you know, just hoping that something, something was out there for me. I ended up uh, finding an internship at Rock Nation, you know, um, and I reached out cold to 
you know, the person that was in charge of it, they sent me up for an interview. I got called back like four days later, like you have the job, you know? Um, so I moved back to Brooklyn, uh, moved in with my family. Uh, and I didn't mention it was an unpaid internship. So you turn down job offers for unpaid internships, you know? Um, but I had, a, I had a few, a few dollars kind of like stacked up. So I was at Liberty to do that, you know, fortunate enough, but, uh, I did that doing branch teacher partnerships. I was working with, uh, clients and artists such as like, you know, DJ Khaled, you know, Big Sean throughout the way, not, not directly, but kind of like indirectly, just kind of like working right. on their strategy and their right, meetings, right. their external relations, you know, um, that was fun. Uh, long story <laughs> short, uh, nepotism is real. Uh, it didn't work so out real. there. <laughs> So real. It, it, it didn't work out there. It, it didn't work out there. I ended up getting I ended up getting a job offer at this company um, called Suzy, a startup, a consumer intelligence startup. It's still doing amazing, um, but things just didn't work out. You know, um, as it as it as it happens. You know, I had a successful su successful tenure, but you know, I, I didn't feel fulfilled. You know, doing it day to day. I was there for about a year and a half, and I found a fellowship called Bench for America, which I'm still a part of to this day. Uh, special shout out to VFA, and um, Essentially, the fellowship is for entrepreneurially spirited young professionals. They uh, they kind of like empower us to start our own company and or be a startup leader. Um, they place us in these smaller ecosystem cities. We say smaller ecosystem, but it's not necessarily smaller. It's like emerging ecosystem city. So yeah. like Cleveland, our startup, our startup community is it's amazing. You know, so here um, I'm connecting with my fellow fellows, you know, working on a bunch of campaigns to empower one another and support each other along the way as everyone kind of like goes through that journey to entrepreneurship because that's ultimately what you know a lot of us want to do you know um but what what got me to Cavs specifically was uh, dan gilbert is actually a funder of the program our, our chairman dan gilbert and i i reached out to hr like hey i have these transferable skills you know i see this opening you know what's up and uh, yeah what's Lord up? Behold, i got i got here <laughs> yeah yeah well so uh what I heard a lot about the different experiences that you had was that hustle mentality. And that's something that we talked a lot about earlier with Dan mm -hmm. and about at the end of the day, even if you don't think that you want to get into sales, a lot about what you do in sports entertainment is, is selling something. Either you're selling yourself, you're mm -hmm. selling a product, you're selling a team, you're selling something and using some of those skills. Mm -hmm. and so throughout this journey, you're, you're kind of having these different stops. You know, what was it about what you gained as a college student since that three years removed for you really kind of separated you from everybody else who you were kind of coming along with when it the Venture Fellows, Rock Nation, mm -hmm. and those in those stocks. Mm -hmm. I'll say um, just knowing to never be satisfied. You know, um, I think that's a gift and a curse because sometimes you take advantage. You you um you miss out on some opportunity doing that. You know, um, just kind of like you know thinking that there's better out there, thinking that the grass is greener. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it is. It's kind of like a it's like a slippery slope. But for myself, um, I never wanted to take you know, the road that everyone else was doing. I always wanted to do the road less traveled. Like, you know, when I, when I, when I told people I was moving to Cleveland, they was like, Cleveland, you know, LeBron's not there, you know, but I just knew it, it wouldn't necessarily be a challenge, but it's something that everybody else isn't doing. And ultimately I don't right. want to be like everybody else. I can only be myself. And I knew this was a path for me to get into the NBA. Um, I, I tried, reached out to the professional teams out in New York. Uh, I, I got offered some opportunities, but they, they didn't kind of like come with what I was looking for. You know, so it just it just is what it is. You know, sometimes you will all the times in my case, you just got to take the road less traveled and just understanding, you know, your path is your path. You can't compare yourself to anybody else. You know, um, I, right. have, I have, I have def, I have a lot of people you know, I look up to, I connect with, I, I love them, I respect them. But everybody's journey is different. You know, I can never right. compare myself. What have you, you know, you said you're three years removed from graduating. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing to kind of um keep yourself top of mind for people at whether it's within your organization or outside of your organization to kind of prepare mm -hmm. for the rest of your journey mm -hmm. um i can i can allude to uh just always staying connected um reaching out uh whether it be you know people just crossing your mind or you seeing somebody accomplish something you know um seeing somebody going through something um i say um authentic relationships is something I, I kind of like always, you know, find myself um, being successful at um, just, just being present and being available for people. I say I'm um, always reaching out. Uh, but uh, something that I'm, I'm working on right now, 
I'm going to be sending out like a quarterly update, you know, to everybody um, that I've crossed paths with, cross, cross paths with over the past like seven to eight years, you know, throughout undergrad, you know, professionally. That's something I'm going to be doing going into Q4 um, this year. But um, just always reaching out. Um, I, I yes. said I'm, I'm, I'm pretty intentional about that. You know, um, if I think about somebody or I see somebody, you know, get a new job, you know, on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm always reaching out. I'm always looking to stay connected. I love that you talk about that because it's something that I think a lot of times that um, the the game changers that we engage with, they always wait until they need something to connect mm -hmm. with somebody. You know, somebody that never, says, that never hey, works. contact Kareen and they, they, they do the one contact and then the next time you hear from them is when they need a job or when they need something. But it's like, what are you doing to constantly be top of mind to let them know, hey, it's this is what I'm up to. Even if they don't respond, you're still like keeping them updated on what's going on. You know, I want to make sure we have Isaiah home. Shout out to Isaiah. Uh, I'm excited for his journey now that I am privileged to be a witness. He's going to be working college game day on behalf of Winning Edge this, Congrats. this weekend at Miami. And he's on here his first time for the conversation. And, and talking to him, you know, he's not quite sure what he wants to do. You know, he has interests. He's a great leader from the conversations that I've had with people on campus about him. He's a great leader, but, you know, he's still not quite sure what he wants to do. But And that's I, okay. Yeah. But, whoop, that's, that's okay. okay. I, I, that's okay. I, um, I have an idea what I want to do, but, you know, sometimes what God provides to you, you know, you just, you just don't know. You know, if you would have told me, like, you know, 18 months ago, I'd be in Cleveland working for the Cavaliers. I'd be like, what? You know, how? No, you know, um, sometimes it's just like, it just happens. You got to just, you know, stay the course, you know, figure it out, man. But um, I'll say just find means of staying intentional and find some good mentors. Find good mentors. And um, before I, I get to my last question, we I love mm -hmm. it when we have questions. You don't get questions a lot of times. Our audience is always scared to ask questions, but we do have some questions. So I want to make sure... We get to those, um, but we have um, one Jazzy Jeff, uh, asked, <laughs> which I feel like that's somebody you know. I yeah. feel with that reaction, you know this person. That's my guy. That's my guy. What about the Cavs organization wanted you to be a part? You know, you talked about Dan Gilbert was mm -hmm. uh, was a part of the Venture Fellows and what mm -hmm. that organization is doing, but there had to be something about the Cavs. And I'll be honest with you, the Cavs are one of my favorite organizations. They lead the way when it comes to diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. and, and not just the NBA, but in mm -hmm. the industry in general. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jock Quez. We got Mary in the building. Mary stay watching us. Um, but what about the Cavs really kind of interested you? Well, I'll say um, you kind of alluded to it. Um, just doing my research on the organization, you know, I think um, externally a lot of people like, you know, LeBron's not there. It's nothing going on. But, you know, internally throughout all of our properties, a major pillar of our organization is, is civic leadership and engagement. That's something I believe in, you know, all throughout, you know, my life and, you know, just coming through undergrad, postgrad, you know, um, it was just always being involved in the community. And that's something we're big, they're big, we're big about, we're huge about, you know, from the top, from our CEO, Len, Len Kamarowski, down to, you know, our, our ticket sales team or, you know, our part-time. Everyone's very, very, very involved in the community. That's something that definitely stood out to me. And you, you alluded to um, diversity and inclusion, uh, myself understanding, you know, personally, the, the value of diversity. You know, I'm seeing people that look like me and, you know, all different, you know, people of color, you know, feeling invited and inclusive you know, in our environment, that definitely stood out to me. Um, several senior senior leaders are black, you know, <laughs> um, just being candid, that, that stood out to me too. You know, so I was just like, you know, I, I do I do see an opportunity of for growth there. You know, it was very hard for me to leave my, my mother and my grandmother out in Brooklyn uh, to come to Cleveland. You know, uh, my girlfriend's with me, um, you know, um, God is good. But um, I, I, was, I moved by myself, you know, initially, and that was definitely um, a tough decision. But I'll say everything's working out. Yeah, we got a question from our, our stories that we put out. Where do you ultimate, ultimately see Jared in five to ten years? You know, I think I, I will be honest to say that's always a tough question for me because I'm always, my passion kind of steers where I go. And mm -hmm. Sometimes I think it's going to take me this way and, you know, end up is, it, I end up in a different way. But knowing that you're in a, you're gaining skills that, um, 
speak to revenue generating roles and, and stuff like that. Where do you where do you ultimately see yourself in five to ten years? Well, I see myself uh, creating value. Um, I see myself opening doors for other people that that look like me and you know that inspire me. You know, on the day to day, I see myself uh, giving back to the community. Uh, I see myself um, potentially married with kids. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see myself. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to put my five to ten year goal on a specific role, you know, because you know our job is our job, you know. But the life that I'm looking to live is. Uh, I want it to be based on fulfillment, you know, and just giving back to others, you know. So um, that's what I see myself doing. We have a question in the chat from Primetime underscore mm -hmm. forty seven. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest adversity in your young professional transition so far? And I always like to like add a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. um, especially you know our audience a lot of our, our viewers are going to be minorities first generation college students maybe they're low income maybe they don't know about opportunities outside of being a coach or a player or whatever so um i know i had i had struggles coming up as a black woman this space so what was the like one instance where you were like you know this is this sucks like, I know for a fact, yeah, maybe not for a fact, but I know maybe my counterparts that don't look like me aren't having to um, go through this. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll be I'll be 100% real with you. Uh, my first internship coming out of school, um, I told you about the company. I hope, you know, everyone got, got into it. Um, I It was it was horrible for me. Um, <laughs> just being in an un, a unpaid position, you know, um, I was fighting, you know, myself, um, just knowing that, you know, the, the the chief brand officer, the person I ultimately reported to, you know, he was in the office 4.30 in the morning. You know, um, he lived in Times Square. I don't know if you've ever been to New York City, but Times Square. Yes, in unfortunately. You know, yeah. <laughs> fortunately, don't say that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he lived, He had a penthouse in Times Square in the office 39th. So he'd wake up 4 o'clock, you know, take a shower, be in the office at 5. I try to match that same intensity, although my commute was like 45 minutes, 50 minutes. I did that three times out the out the um, week, you know, just being connected, uh, you know, staying, working 50, 60 long hours. Like I said, unpaid, you know, and ultimately not getting that job offer, you know, after, you know, doing all the work I did, you know, and losing it to his nephew at the time. <laughs> that um, that was that was the, the most adversity I faced. And I'll, I'll never forget that feeling, you know, but I'll say um, God is good because um, the opportunity I have now is way better than any opportunity I would have got there. You know, um, and ultimately, um, I didn't burn the bridge. You know, I uh, still got a, a lot of love for them. Um, a lot of people that I worked with uh, previously, um, but it it was it was a, it was a it was a messed up situation for me. Yeah, you know, I feel like I, I sacrificed a life a lot to be in that you know um, predicament. But it is what it is. I learned a lot. You know, and I, I still um, you know value my experience there, and I'm thankful. Awesome, awesome. Well, I always end the I always end the conversation with this question, and we actually had John Ford fourteen um, ask this question. Mm -hmm. and I, what is Jared, the younger Jared? What are you telling the younger Jared when mm -hmm. he's in college about um, if he's starting to look at getting in the industry? What do you What advice are you giving that Jared um, as he's preparing for his journey? I'm telling him to um, put the hours in. Um, I have a mentor of mine, uh, Jared Noble. Shout out to him. I don't know if he's on or not. Uh, he worked with me uh, here at the Cavs. He's now at the Chargers um, in, a, in a high revenue generating role. So shout out to him. He told me put in 10,000 10, hours. You know, um, no matter what you're doing, you know, um, you got to put in the time. Nobody's successful by accident. You know, right. um, people are intentional about their time and their experience. So I'll say um, get the, get get that experience. Um, try to try to understand what you want to do. You know, um, I know what it's like to be an undergrad, or I I, I had I didn't go to graduate school, but you know, being in school and still not knowing what you want to do after, you know, um, try to figure that out. Uh, it may take some long hours, some long days. You know, just sitting with yourself, journaling, figure that out, and move towards it. You know, um, you can't just wake up one day and just say, "Hey, I want to do something," and apply and get the job. You know, somebody else that you know, is putting in that time is going to get that job, you know, because right. they have the experience to speak to it. You know, um, they're not finessing the system. They actually did it. They got people to vouch for them, you know, um, put in the time, put in the hours and be super intentional. And don't be, don't be afraid, you know, to take an opportunity that a lot of people are passing up, you know, because the, if, if I didn't take that, you know, my first unpaid internship, I wouldn't be here right now.
Right. And I love that you say that. And I appreciate your time and energy and sure. your insight and dropping knowledge for the next generation. I think it's important for us to have these casual but informative conversations to get mm -hmm. our community used to these different opportunities, used to seeing people that look like them in these roles, comfortable with knowing that it doesn't have to be roses and butterflies, the journey, you know, it's going to be hard, it's going to struggle, you're going to struggle sometimes, but, um, we were built for this, we're going to be okay, and there's people out there who want to see us succeed, so where can people find you, if they're watching, if they're going to be watching a week from now, mm -hmm. if their friends send it to them, where can they find you, and Isaiah, I want to thank everybody here, Isaiah, I hope you are listening to what we got going on, but where can people find you? Um, they want to get connected with you. I'll say shout out to Isaiah. I can tell already he's resourceful. You know, um, that's good. That's that's a quality that, you know, anyone in leadership has. You know, they, they know how to, you know, not necessarily like take advantage, but, you know, look at opportunities out there, you know, and just be in the right place at the right time. So shout out to him. But I'll say yes. um, hit me up. Um, I'm here. I'm on Instagram. I'm on here every other day, you know, um, at Jared Humor, my first and my last name. I don't hide who I am. <laughs> anyone, anyone I cross paths with can find me here. Um, just shoot me a DM. I'll get back. I know people like, oh, shoot me a note, shoot me an email. Man, my email is flooded. <laughs> you know, hit me, hit me on the DMs, you know. If, if That's we have so real. Combos, if we have a few convos, I'll, I'll, shoot you, I'll shoot you my number. We could definitely stay connected. But um, I'm definitely down to always help the, the next generation. So if there's any way I could be helpful or resourceful, feel free to reach out. And best of luck to everybody watching this. Awesome, Sauce. Thank you so much. Uh, Primetime 47 Isaiah, we appreciate you all. Make sure to tune in to what's next. Um, next week, we have guests. We try to have guests every Wednesday. Jared, you're going to get more of your friends, more people in your network to come join us and have 100%. like this so we can continue to support the next generation. I appreciate your time. For sure. Appreciate you. Peace. Awesome. So if you are new to the Winning Edge, please make sure you set your notifications for when we go live. We don't go live all the time just Wednesdays and we're having these kind of conversations and we want to make sure that we're providing you with the information and the knowledge that you want to hear you um, from the people you want to hear from that look like you. So don't be afraid to jump in our DMs. Tell us about people you want to hear from. You'd be surprised who we've had JJ Reddick to Tiki Barber to um, anybody almost that you could think of. We, we try to get on here, follow us, sign up for our email list and continue to change the game. I'm Kareem Million, the executive director of the Winning Edge Leadership Academy. Thank you so much and join us next week.